As a 101st soldier, I am truly honored to join you today on this sacred ground and grateful for the opportunity to commemorate the actions of two brave 101st medics. Although their actions occurred 80 years ago, their bravery and their inspirational story has not faded with time. Robert E. Wright was a 101st paratrooper and a medic. Once he landed, he noticed a, cheap, uh, a church steeple and headed towards it. He found himself here at the Church of St. Combe and St. Damien. That 19-year-old medic removed a Red Cross flag from his pack and pinned it to the door of the church to identify it as an aid station and neutral ground. At approximately the same time, 20-year-old medic Kenneth Moore was approaching the village from the opposite direction. Kenneth moved towards the church with two soldiers who were injured in the jump. And before long, the church was packed with casualties. Four or five wounded soldiers shared each pew and the floor was covered with wounded. For the next three days, Robert and Kenneth treated wounds that far exceeded their level of medical training. Robert had only received three months of medical training and Kenneth had only received three weeks. And on the evening of 6 June, an American officer entered the church and told Robert and Kenneth that the Germans had broken through the U.S. lines and U.S. forces were being forced to withdraw from the town. The two medics decided to stay with the casualties to continue to provide life-saving care. And by the end of 6th of June, approximately 80 men, among them Americans, Germans, and French, were under the care of Robert and Kenneth within the church. American troops recaptured Angoville on the afternoon of June 7th after a final day of fierce fighting. Robert and Kenneth had maintained the aid station throughout the entire battle and only departed the church when Angoville was finally liberated. Their actions were both selfless and heroic. The memorial commemorating this battle is marked with two flags, one French and one American. Unlike many memorials from June of 1944, the memorial does not include a long list of those killed. It instead celebrates lives saved. The inscription reads, in honor and in recognition of Robert E. Wright, Kenneth J. Moore, Medics, 2nd Battalion, 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division, for humane and life-saving care rendered to 80 combatants and a child in this church in June 1944. As fewer and fewer World War II veterans are able to make the trip to Normandy, there are fewer Normans of the same era. It is our nor responsibility to ensure these stories and sacrifices are never forgotten. And the bonds that were formed between American soldiers and their French citizens remain unbreakable. Our history is your history. And we would not be here today without the incredible efforts of so many local citizens and community leaders. These individuals dedicate their time, energy, and personal resources to ensure that our collective history is preserved. Please join me in a round of applause for all those who continue to safeguard our history so that we may always remember. As I close my comments this morning, I want to reiterate how thankful I am for the opportunity to celebrate such an important part of our shared history. This place will always have a special place in the hearts of the Screaming Eagles, as will the people of this part of France. I'm Cyril Bauer. Company I, 377th Regiment, 95th Infantry Division. I did not come prepared to speak, but as I sat out there, I realized I should, because I am speaking from, for World War II servicemen, some 16 million who served in World War II, both in the Pacific and in, in the uh, African-American, uh, African-Europe theater. I did not come prepared, but uh, that's the way it is in life. So uh, I realized when, I, when Christian said here that, uh, that we could come to France and that we might be that I might be the only veteran that came. Thankfully, there are two of us here that, that fought in France. So uh, I came, I realized it was my duty to come at age 101. So, I wanted to honor 
the two men that fought here. I, I also want to honor, honor the fact that they, they treated both their enemies and their, and, and their, their people, and that their own men. And this is, a, is, as the general said, an act of humanity. And it is great that we have always, as always, our own forces to protect and the, uh, the free nations. And uh, our screaming eagles are a, a demonstration of that. I came for America. I came for France. And I came for humanity. Vive la France and long live the United States of America. Merci. Régional, Monsieur Jacob Kiskat, représentant de Monsieur Christian Eugène Olsen, président de la Fondation des vétérans danois, mes collègues élus, mesdames et messieurs, chers amis. Bienvenue à la volonté d'honorer les résistants, leurs actions et l'importance des opérations de Jacques Beurre. Non seulement ces actions étaient déterminantes, mais elles sont encore aujourd'hui... Without the courage and sacrifice of the French and Allied citizens, nearly 73,000 Allies killed or captured and more than 150,000 wounded. On the French side, there was an estimated 14,000 civilians killed. That is why these very resistant Nazi power, they are the French resistance. In 1940, participate in the greatest effort to free the free, to effort to free the world from Nazism. But in the same room, to make sure that these words will remain embedded for generations to come. Words of recognition, words of an unversaid. This monument would not have happened without the support of an inclusive democracy, particularly Kay Weninger and Colonel Retired Andy Ann. Distinguished guests, today we gather at the Normandy French Resistance Monument to honor an undying legacy of courage and commitment, a legacy that 80 years ago shaped the very world we live in today. We stand here to remember the valor of those who fought, the wisdom of those who led. 
inébranlable que nous voyons dans le paysage. Special Operations Command Europe, and then uh, we've got several of our. Entendre par mon allocution de Monsieur François Xavier Matéoni, président de l'association des amis de la Fondation. Même Maquisar s'enrôlèrent dans la première armée française qui participa à la libération du territoire jusqu'à la victoire. Car ils avaient en commun, bien sûr, l'amour de la France, mais aussi viscéralement opposé à l'idéologie nazie. Cette folie de haine paranoïaque qu'on doit s'effacer devant la puissance guerrière. Thousands, naked and thin, trembling in the laden wagons who tore the night with beating nails. There were thousands of them, there were 20 and 100. On June, which clearly reflected the process of dehumanization from May to June of 19. Remember the important role of the many French secretaries trained in the FTP of Torres based the right Panzer Division. There were 99 resistance members hanged and 100 different political, philosophical. The memorial commemorating this battle is marked with two flags one French and one American. Unlike many memorials from June of 1944, the memorial does not include a long list of those killed. It instead celebrates lives saved. The inscription reads, In honor and in recognition of Robert E. Wright, Kenneth J. Moore, Medics, 2nd Battalion, 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division, for humane and life-saving care rendered to 80 combatants and a child in this church in June 1944.